and we are live. All right, so this is going to be a bi-weekly training that we're going to get going, and um, I haven't released 2013 schedule yet, but it will be coming soon. And again, all of these uh, online trainings are completely customer-based, um, suggestion-based. Um, when people come down for training, they make suggestions. Uh, I'm talking with people out in the field or on on the internet, and they're saying, "Hey, I want this." So last uh, two weeks ago, we did one on uh, proper um, bit selection and feeds and speeds. And again, these are all these are all recorded as well. And you can go onto our Shopbot website and go down to training. And they will be in here as far as training tutorials and videos, and they're all listed in there. And um, you can click right there, and they're all right there. Um, this one, once it's done being recorded, you'll be able to come to shopbottools.com, go to the support, go to tutorials, and then it'll be here under the web classes. So if you missed last uh, week's on 924. Uh, that's the tool database and bit selection. So that's where you can go to find these. Uh, just so you know, too, if, if you leave this training with some, a bunch of questions and you still like to ask more, one is you can always call us right here. Here's our phone number. Two is we have a forum. It's a pretty active forum, and there's a lot of guys on here asking a lot of questions. It's nice to get uh, outside answers sometimes from just the tech support guys because a lot of these guys that are right down here are out in the field all day long cutting on their machines, so they really know what's going on. Um, so, you know, you got you got different options as far as getting more help in the future. But, um, again, any of the people we just uh, logged on last, uh, I have you muted as far as talking to me. Um, but I do have the chat window open. So if you look on your little gray box there, you should be able to have a little minus sign next to where it says chat. And you can open that down, and you can see where we can talk to each other through chat. And again, when we finish up this training at the end, uh, I will make sure to stick around for a little bit, and we'll do some uh, uh, questions and answers. So if anybody else has any other questions, towards the end that is not specific to this that you want just a, another question um, you know please feel free to stick around for that and uh, with that said we'll get going here so let me just close this and I'm just gonna check on the audio here I gotta make sure this is recording still screen sharing on um, okay so what I would like everybody to do is open up a fresh version of PartWorks um, we're just gonna open we're just really gonna be playing around in here today we're really not saving any files this is really nothing specific this is what we're gonna do is today is we're gonna go through some common tool pathing you know mistakes and errors and uh, recommendations so it's all in a bunch of one wrapped up in one uh, I'll start out with Profile, we'll get into pocket, drilling, V carve, and fluting. So they're, we're going to cover all five of those different ones. So let's just create a new file. And again, if you're using Aspire, it's going to be the same thing. And really, we're not cutting. So uh, if you if you aren't exactly matched up with me on the screen, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to create one. We'll just go two foot, 24 inches by 24, and I'll make it you know three quarters of an inch thick so it's always good when you're doing this right now to always keep in mind you know what's going on here I got my Z0 to the table and I have a three quarter inch thick so just two foot by two foot by three quarter it really doesn't have to be specific right now we're just going to be doing it here and going doing some simple drawing um, so the first one I want to start out with is profiles so let's create a just just draw a rectangle and we'll put the bottom position of it at, say, uh, just one inch and one inch. And let's create this nine inch by nine inch uh, square. So I just have a square corner. I'm putting the bottom corner an inch and an inch. That's a nine by nine. Bang, there it is. 
So um, I really want to have three of these all together for this first demonstration. So if I double click on it, and I made it so that it's uh, right, one click, you just have it pink around the edges for the vector selected. Double click in it. Now you've got all these little corners where you can grab it. What I can do from here is hold shift and control and I can drag it up and it makes a copy for me. And I can also from there holding shift and control drag it and make a third copy. You know, what we could do, you know, that's just a quick way to make multiple copies. So, it's really all I'm looking for right now is is uh three three squares. So with these on here, let's go over and actually toolpath them uh, real quick. We're going to start out with some basic stuff, and then we will be get into more advanced for each toolpath. But um, you know, a lot of this basic stuff is stuff that it's well thought to maybe do again, and and really you know keep that in mind. So I switch over to my toolpaths, and what I want to create right now is just a profile. And um, for this profile, I just uh, I wanted to go all the way through. I knew my material was 0.75, and I'm going to make it thicker. Now, this is one thing too. We, you know, we can step real back and go back to basics. You know, how how deep is too deep to go into your board, or what's not deep enough? You know, 0.75 depth with a 0.75 material. Who's to say that material, you know, mics out at 0.75 all the way across? It could actually be, you know, 0.72. It could actually be 0.78. So. Um, I want to make sure I cover that 0.78, so I want to make sure you know I actually cut down into the table a little bit. Um, I zeroed to the uh, table surface for this one, so um, I'm actually going to cut this at like 0.77. I'm going to you know I'm going to go down to the table a little bit. I know it's 0.7, you know, but going 0.02 into the table isn't a big deal. And um, select a bit. Um, for this one, we'll use, I've got a, I say we'll go grab a half inch straight bit right there. Just a big bit so you can, this is just, you know, for demo purposes here. Um, and this is where I wanted to, some people are have, you know, question this outside, inside, or on the line. Which one should I cut on? Well, it depends on your part. Right now, I have a nine inch by nine inch square. And say my customer said, "I want you to cut me um, three nine inch by nine inch squares," and I'm going to show you the difference between you know cutting them nine inch by nine inch or cutting them wrong. Um, the machine vectors it shows you a nice little image right here where it actually shows where that cutter head is. That yellow that yellow circle is your bit. And right now it's on the outside of my nine inch by nine inch square. So if it machined, it would leave nine inches by nine inches. When I put it on the inside, now I'm actually cutting on the inside of that nine by nine. So with a half inch bit, it's taking a half inch out on this side, a half inch out on that side. That square is actually going to come out eight by eight. Or if I switch and I put it on the line, this is where it's going to cut halfway outside of the square and halfway inside. So just to show you real quick exactly this, I want to make one that is to the outside. And uh, again, you don't have to follow along with these right now. I am just going to show you a preview. I'll do one on the inside. And we'll wait and we'll 3D the, or we'll uh, preview these all as one right now. All right. And finally, this one's going to be on the line. All right. So now I can take these and preview all my tool paths, and we'll see that there's three different size squares. Though in the drawing menu, we know that's a nine inch square times three because we just copied and pasted them. However, in the 3D view, they are clearly a different size. This one here that we profiled to the outside of our 9x9, nine nine, that square has stayed 9 inches in the X, 9 inches in the Y. This one here is substantially smaller. This is the one that we had toolpath towards the inside. And then the third one is the one that we had go on each side of the line. Um, so you can just tell by looking at the different sizes. 
so you need to make sure when you're creating a profile, you're selecting the right side you want to machine on your on your part. Um, for this one, we would have wanted the outside, which was our bottom left one. So that's just something that you know is pretty easy, but also pretty easily overlooked. Um, when you come back in to create a new, say I come in right now to create a new tool path, I'm going to create a profile, you know, my new profile. It it goes on the software automatically goes back to your previous one. So if you previously had it on the line and right now you want it on the outside, you got to physically change it. And it's real easy for that to get overlooked because you just change your depth, make sure you got the right bit, and then you're coming down here to hit calculate. So make sure that it's on the one that you want. Um, something that gets pretty easily overlooked. So I've got a bunch of these tool paths now, and I don't want them here. The easiest way to get rid of them is just to highlight one and come down here where the red X is, and it says delete tool path. And by clicking that, it deletes them. Here's one thing to remember about deleting a tool path. There is no edit undo. There is no you know, undeleting these. Once you have hit delete tool path you can't come up here and do an edit undo what you're doing is undoing down here in the drawing area you're not doing anything over here so once it's deleted it's deleted so it's a good it's a good habit to have to be saving all the time when it's a, a, a project that you want to keep okay here we go so you know Justin shared with us you know he had a he made the mistake of cutting on the inside versus the outside it, you really gotta watch it I mean the machines gonna do whatever you tell it to do so make sure you're you're cutting where it needs to be alright so let me just uh, you know let's get rid of two of the, cert, the squares and we'll just keep one square I'm gonna just enlarge it so it's a little easier for us to uh, you know view while we're cutting so I just 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 put yeah blend there done that I hear you um, just just make one square right in the middle. No specific size. We're going to look a little further into profiles. <clears throat> so, again, pro let's go create a profile. The depth doesn't change. We still want to cut all the way through. Now, remember, too, you don't always need a profile to go all the way through. Sometimes you might need it just to be a half inch deep. You know, I know there's a thing called a pocket, but what if you need to do a half inch groove all the way around on a specific line? You know, that's where you could use a profile as a pocket. So, and we can do a demo on that later on if you like. If somebody wants to do that, write that one down and uh, remind me at the end. Um, so for this one, I want to go 0.77, and I want to select a different bit for this. I actually just want to use a quarter inch, uh, a bit. And as you notice in my tool base, tool bit selection, it says notes original feed six, original plunge six. So this is a router bit starter kit that I bought, and for me, it, I felt that the original feed and the original plunge were way too high for that quarter inch bit. So what I did was I came down here and modified them to the bits, feeds, and speeds that I wanted, and I just put a note up here and saved it so I, I could always reference back to what it what it should have been. Um, I'd also put one there like original pass depth if I changed the pass depth to whatever. But just so you know, in case you ever you know want to reset some of your values. But for right now, let's just get a quarter inch bit and make sure it has a pass depth of you know a quarter inch, and hit OK. So right here in, the, in this version of Partworks, we got a thing here where it says Edit Passes. And if you click on that, what we can actually do is go in here, and t it tells us how deep each pass is going to go. So if, if I know I'm using like a really, really hard piece of, say, um, sugar maple, where I don't want to take a chance of breaking that quarter-inch bit, all I have to do is come down here and say, all right, I want five passes. Now it's telling me that each pass depth is going 0.154, so about 3 uh depth there. So that's really that's really pretty nice um, for the uh, uh, quick quick adding. Uh, let's see, I don't have that with my software. Do I have an older? You probably just have an older version of Partworks, uh, Adnan, and. If you're looking to get a newer version because you want this, just wait till the first of the year 
and uh, Vectrix actually releasing the brand new um, VCarve and uh, uh, Aspire will be out then. We just got back from their um, uh, users group in Cincinnati and the new software is looking awesome. So I'm really anxious for that release. So this is one thing, you know, you can just come really and quick and set passes. gives you a depth. So uh, keep that one in mind. Oh, I don't want my five passes. I'm going to actually turn that back to three. Just click OK. Boom, it's changed. Remember, I want this to be on the outside. So, and then climb and conventional. This is another thing that gets looked over a lot. You know, what we train here is anything that is um, grown by, you know, Mother Nature, uh, a piece of, you know, natural wood is what we recommend you use climb with. And anything that's been machined or uh, synthetically made or glued up as far as plywood, uh, we say conventional. Now, you know, this rule of thumb works 90% of the time. However, you've got the one t test that you can always do that could find out for sure on your specific material. Maybe you brought me in a, a piece of um, synthetic uh, plastic for a piece of playground equipment. I, I, I don't know. I've never actually cut that before. So I would do this test. And what the test would be is I'd actually, you know, make up a, a, a toolpath file and I'd cut a little bit of it. I'd cut out, you know, one, for example, say I needed one of these squares. I would cut one out. And then I would take my finger and I would feel along the edge of it on both my scrap piece and my actual piece that I want for my project. And whichever one has the smoother edge is the one that's um, being cut correctly. So if your scrap piece has a smoother edge than your finished part, you need to come back into the software and switch the direction. So um, we'll just uh, we'll leave ours at climb um, on the outside. And I wanted to get in and spend some time with tabs. A lot of people, um, you, you got to hold your part down. I mean, you could have a, the nicest vacuum system in the world that holds, you know, your uh, your part down to your table and your scrap down. But what happens when you get into little one inch by one inch parts? You know, there, unless you get in some fancy fancy fixturing, um, you know, that's not going to get held down. So tabs are really a useful a useful thing to add to this toolpath. So I'm going to actually just hit calculate right now. I'm not going to add anything and we're going to come back and do some different things back and forth to this. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to hit calculate, reset my preview, and I'm going to preview all toolpaths. So right there it's showing me that I have a square is what I'm cutting out. And if I come over here and hit delete wasted material, all that material goes away. There's nothing in there holding, um, there's nothing in there holding my finished product to the, to the scrap material. That's going to be an issue. I don't have a vacuum on my table. I have to hold it down manually with screws or tape or fixtures, whatever I'm doing. So I somehow need, when that, that, when that machine makes its full cut and comes all the way around, if it's a small little thing, it, it has a good uh, tendency of coming up and falling out of there. So, uh, Steve, it's supposed to depend on your upcut or, yeah, down, upcut, downcut. Um, if you're using a compression bit, you know, all that stuff can be factors into the smooth edges. So, um, sorry, I got to read the habit of, if people ask a question, I need to read it out loud so anybody online um, can uh, know what's going on, too, because they don't get to see the chat log. Um, so let's go. I'm going to go back in and edit this toolpath. So what we were talking about is tabs. I want to add tabs to this toolpath. And the tabs can all be modified to the size that you want. You can give them a specific length, and you can give them a specific thickness, and you can make them 3D. So let's go back up and kind of go through each one of these. A tab, you want ideally to have the tab as small as you can to safely hold the material in place. Like, I really don't want to have a two-inch long tab that's 0.75 thick. I'm going to have to go and take a jigsaw and cut the tab out when I'm done. I want a tab that's just just big enough that it, it holds the material to the uh, piece that I'm actually cutting, 
and then I can just flip it over when I'm done cutting and take a utility knife and just put a little bit of pressure and have it pop out. Or I'll be able to just pull it out from the top if I have a small enough tab. When I run three-quarter inch material, this has been my go-to tab for plywood and hardwoods. A point four and a point two two. That's been a pretty good tab. Now remember, I keep my table pretty surfaced and flat and clean, and I'm up on the maintenance and that flat table. So you got a table that hasn't been surfaced in a while. Uh, you might want to beef that tab up just a little bit. That tab is about as less as you can go. You go any less than that, and your parts will start coming out of there. So that's because I cut a lot of excuse me, I cut a lot of stuff, and I have to remove a lot of tabs. So I've got that dialed in. So I don't have to spend much time. I can just nip them out with a knife and hit them real quick with a piece of sandpaper, and the tab is gone. Um, what is the difference here on the thickness versus the 3D? If you see that thickness one, uh, the, the middle icon here, it's a rectangular-shaped tab versus this bottom picture, which is a pyramid shape. So think about the, the square-shaped one. Um, think about the machine, what it's got to do. So the machine would actually... And let me just, uh, I'll draw it for you. What's going to be quicker for the machine to do? Is it going to be quicker to, if this is my toolpath coming in, I'm going straight, I hit a tab, I got to go up, I got to go over, I got to go down, and I got to go straight again. Well, hopefully straighter than that. <laughs> That's got a lot of steps in it. Where with a 3D tab, I go over, I start going up for the tab, I come back down, and then I go straight again. So there's a lot less steps in this 3D one on the bottom. So whenever you, whenever you can, I've never even used the the other tab. I've only used the uh, 3D tabs. So I mean, take that <laughs> for showing how I do it. Um, we need to physically go in and edit tabs, which is actually should say add tabs, because right now there's no tabs on here. We actually need to go in and edit them and in install them onto our part. Um, in here, you have a automatic adding tab, or you can click on them yourself. So right now, I could just hit constant number. If I put that at four and I hit add tabs, boom, it's going to drop four in there. Um, say I don't like the position. I'd rather put my tabs in a specific place. Uh, think about a part where there's a lot of inside or outside curves. You know, you wouldn't want a tab way down on an inside curve that you can't get to. Um, I'd rather. Uh, have it in a position that's easier for me to uh, sand off. Uh, so, for, for instance, right here, I'm going to delete all these tabs. Um, I could click on them one by one, and they go away, or I can just hit delete all tabs. And remember, too, you can you can put a tab exactly where you want. You just highlight over, run your mouse over, and that little check mark shows up. And when that little check mark shows up, that means you can click and let it go, and there's a tab. So the little T gets added. If you really wanted it down here, you just click on this one and it goes away. Now think about this as a piece of wood. If this was a piece of hardwood and the grain was going this back and forth, uh, left and right, I think I'd want my tabs to be like this with the grain so they'd be a lot easier to pop out with a knife. Now I would do my tabs like this. You know, having a tab against the grain over here is going to be a little bit more effort trying for me to cut out. So plan your tabs. If this is a piece of MDF, it wouldn't matter. If this is a piece of hardwood, red oak, or maple, I want my tabs to make sure they're up in the area where, um, sorry, let me zoom in here, where it's easier for me to pull that tab out. The less effort I have to do once the, once the board comes off the shop bot, the, the better for me. The more time I have to do other things. So this is great. I'm going to I'm, I'm happy with the tabs location. I'm going to hit close. So everything that we've done in here has not been saved yet. Until you actually come down here and hit calculate, if I was to hit close and check out of this, I would lose all that work that I just did. So it's always good to come and hit calculate. And forget that warning screen. We'll go over that in a minute. So remember earlier I had no tabs. If I reset my preview and I go preview all tool paths, boom, you see there's a tab in there now. And it's not that big of a tab. It's not, you know, it's only 0 0.22 up, so it's it's not all the way to the top, but on the back side of this board, you will see how it's flush with the back. 
So tabs are really they're really great. I mean, the the software can go in there and add those for you. Can you imagine trying to to write a code for that or try to draw that in there? So um, as much of a, a tab can be a nuisance, it's probably a nuisance because you put it in the wrong spot or you made it too big. And I'll I'll attest to that learning that the hard way. But now that I've done enough projects. I know I need to not make my tab any bigger than it needs to be, and I need to put it in a position that's easy for me to remove. So when I get done cutting this square on my tool, I would just uh, flip it over to the back side and take my utility knife and just quickly nip it with the grain, and it comes out real easy that way. So while we're in 3D view, this is a good time to kind of play around in here. Um, with <laughs> You can move this around, and if you get so discombobulated, you've got the uh, icons up here on the top where you can, you know, check the X, Y, Z. You can zoom in. You can look at just the Z, the X, or the Y. And sometimes you want to do this. I might want to just look at the X and turn my profile on, and, and then I can look and see what's going on. I can see these blue lines. These blue lines actually say quite a bit. If I zoom in right here, each blue line is showing me a pass. What did we set our pass passes? How many passes to cut through this? Well, I could have I could go back and look in the profile and check it's three, or why would I need to do that when I could simply just look at the blue lines? Go one pass, two pass, three pass. So understanding that, what's that triangle right there? Well, that's where the machine's coming around on its third pass, goes up and back down and keeps going for that 3D tab. So you can really read a lot into what's going to happen with your toolpath just by playing around in this preview mode. I know when I get to this point, I'm just excited. I want to go watch the machine cut. I'm tired of staring at this computer screen, but it's really good to spend some time um, messing around here in the uh, 3D view. Some other things that you can do is once you're in 3D view is you can come up here into view itself and you can turn on some other things uh, as far as uh, draw origin. So there's my drawing of origin right there. It shows me um, my X, my Y, and my Z. So uh, if I don't need that, I can I can turn that off. And you know, just come around here and play. There's nothing right or wrong on how you how you have it shown. Um, that's the material block showing. You know, now I'm, I can see the thickness of it through these white lines. It all depends on what you want. But just so you know, up here in view, you've got options. Um, and also remember too, you can when you're in your preview, you can also change the uh, material preview. Maybe you have a customer who wants you to do it out of a certain uh, colored wood. Mar here's marble, and they would like you to uh, see what it would look like. And you could do this and model it however you wanted. I'd probably delete the waste material. Then I'd come over here and I could go save preview image. And now I'm able to save that preview. And I can send it on to show a colleague or a customer or, or just to hang up on the wall because you're so proud of your uh, big rectangle you just drew. <laughs> so um, those are some options. So you can play in here with you know you know fill colors, material colors. Um, you can really just come in here and mess around. You know, Steve asked a question here. What is the preference? for your X and Y zero? Is it the bottom of the table, this bottom left corner over here, or is it right here in the center of the, of the material? This really all comes down to your preference. There's no right or wrong. Um, you know, certain job specific, some people like it down in the bottom corner, some people like it in the center. I pretty much always draw X, Y down in the, in the zero, zero down in this bottom corner. Um, but some, you know, some people, when they're setting up their um, like right now you can see my zero zero is right here. Some people when they're setting up their job, they'll put zero zero right there. Maybe you're doing something that always has to be centered like a plaque or um, something where you're always referencing that zero point. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, but for me, you know, most of my type of stuff is furniture and you know the stuff that we do here in training. Uh, we have our zero zero down in our bottom left origin, which is down in the corner of the tool. And it's easier to reference for that. All right, so um, let's go back into uh, just our profile that we've created. So we've kind of spruced this up every time we went through. You know, I ran through it once, and I showed you the outside, the inside. 
Now we just came through and we added a, a tab. Um, and we know what the tabs are now there to hold it in. Now you've got some other options in here. We have leads. We have uh, ramps. We have order. We have corners. So um, I guess one that really does get looked over a lot is order. Um, how do you want the machine to cut? So if I had... Um, Downsize that real quick. Um, say I have a uh, just like a a bunch of parts, and let me just put this up here. Make it a lot easier to see. Uh, say I have all these that we want. I want all these to get cut. When I come over here to create a toolpath for them, if I give it an order, select one or more ordering approaches to try. If more than one option is chosen, the option with the results the shortest rapid move. So you could select it to cut, you know, left to right, bottom to top, and a grid shortest path if you want to cut it quick. So you know, when you really get to dialing in a, in a part, like you know, say you needed to do five thousand of these squares, you know, the faster you can cut it the more economical for you. So this is a, an order that you can come in and mess around with an order. Um, there really isn't much more of it than that. Um, the one that I use quite a bit that does get overlooked by a lot of people is ramps. So what exactly is a ramp? It's really, it's a, it's a way to come in. Uh, what did I, where's my leads? No, ramps. There, sorry. Um, ramps are a nice way to come in and instead of just going straight up and down, you're able to bring your tool bit in at a ramp. And let me try to draw that one for you real quick. Um, so right now we have our tool bit going straight across this this distance. It's going straight across our part. What a ramp is, is you tell it to ramp down so far and then go straight across. So that Z is right here would be dropping all the way down to that first pass and going. Where this one start, gradually goes down and then keeps going. And I'll be able to show you a better 3D view of that. Um, just trying to show as many visuals as I can for, for a ramp. So I want to add a ramp to this toolpath. And um, if it was something circular, I would definitely want to do a spiral. For this one, I'm just going to do a smooth one. And what I'm doing is I'm telling it a distance of how far to ramp. So if here's my start point. This little green circle is, is my start point. So it's saying from here, and this distance is 4 inches, from here to 4 inches, and here's the arrow showing which way it's going to cut. It's going to take 4 inches to get down to that first depth. And, you know, I have three passes, so that's approximately a quarter inch. Um, for a quarter inch pass on a soft piece of plywood, I really don't need a ramp. But if this was a uh, you know a piece of uh, sugar maple, I would want to have a ramp in there. It's easier on your machine, easier on the life of your spindle and your bits. So um, you want that ramp in there. And let me hit calculate, and you'll actually be able to see what the ramp does. You can see that it's kind of hard to find a good angle on this one. But you can see how the blue goes angles down and then goes around versus it going just in a straight line. It's actually ramping down in. Um, another one that's really, no oops, sorry, another one that's really nice to do is a ramp on a circle. Um, for something like this, I would grab this guy and I would give it a ramp with a spiral. So think about it right now, without this ramp it's just going to go down 
uh, to the first depth, which is you know 0.256, and then it's going to go around, and then it's going to go down deeper. It's going to go around, and then it's going to go down deeper and go around. With the spiral added, what it's going to do is keep spiraling downwards. It's never actually going to stop. It's just going to keep going like a big corkscrew. So this one you can really zoom in and see. It's a nice continuous pass where it just spins around like a corkscrew and goes all the way down. And this is this is the best way to do circles with the spiral. Um, I don't like this color. I'll go back. You get so used to seeing the same one. And then if I preview that, you know, you can't really see the preview so fast, but it, it just goes in one and gets rid of it. Again, no I could I should have added tabs to that. That piece is gonna come flying out of there. So um it's really nice to have the the um I'm sorry, the uh the ramps they're really helpful uh, again if you're just going a quarter inch deep into a soft piece of plywood you know you don't have to bother adding the ramp but any other time that you want to save the life of your tooling um, think of a spindle or router you know they're not meant to go up and down they're meant to get pushed around an edge um, so every time that you're you know plunging that thing down into a material you're really you know hitting beating on it pretty hard so um, all right, so for this one, I am going to just hit calculate one more time because I want to. I just want to bring up this error message. Remember, our material is 0.75, and this is 0.77. So every time that I hit calculate and I click uh, quickly, you know, click OK and never bothered to read that, is is another time that I could have went up to my machine and really broke a bit ran the head down into the table, ruined some uh, material, and I know this the hard way because I've done it. So when you hit calculate and it brings this up, don't start getting in the habit of just clicking OK. Get in the habit of reading right here your two decimals because it's real easy for somebody to go in here and instead of, you know, they're typing in I want it 0.77 and they put their decimal out of the place and they hit calculate and if I wouldn't have stopped and read right here, I'm seeing my material thickness is 0.75 and my maximum tool depth is 7.7. .7. That machine is going to try to go 7.7 .7 inches deep. Whatever number you have set right there is the number. Look at it, it's 31 passes, but I guarantee after like the third or fourth pass there, you're, you're not going to be happy with yourself. So don't just keep clicking OK. You go, oh no, look, my decimal's in the wrong place. Hit cancel and then correct it. I want it at 0.77. Ah, three tool passes. That looks better. Now I can go ahead and hit calculate 0 0.75, 0 0.77. Perfect. I'm happy with that. So, all right. Anybody have any quick questions on profile before we move on? Anything they'd like to see else inside of that? Start depth at zero zero standard. Yeah, this is a good point right here. What is the start depth exactly? So this is asking you where do you want that tool path to start? Um, normally, what it's going to be doing is it's, it knows that your material is 0.75, and it's going to come over and it's going to start at the top of your surface right here. If for say some reason you wanted to start down low, you could do that. Let me. Let me put one on here. Let me just do a drawing. I think this will really help. Um, um, so say uh, and you don't have to follow along. I'm going to delete all this in a second. So I'll Right now, I've just created a a pocket. All right, I've created a three eighths deep pocket in the center of this, and then I have my circle that I still want to cut out. Well, there's no need if I have a ton of these that I have to do. There's no need for me to start at zero zero, which is right here on the top of my um, the start depth 
you know, it's not the actual zero of the table. It's the it's the top of the material. So when it's asking you start depth, well, right here's the top. So you're actually starting up here and zero and going down. So for this one here, I would actually want that start depth to be down the three seven five for this pocket or for this second profile. So that's where I would go in and actually change it to start depth point three you know seven five so it's going to start down in the bottom of the pocket versus up on top um, I think probably ninety nine percent of the drawings and projects that I've created and I um, I've always had that at zero is I think one time now that I've actually had that start lower because for, for what I do just basic drawing of projects and furniture I never ever change that start depth um, so and remember, you can have all kinds of stuff going on. You can have projects, you know, parts out here that you don't want maybe till later. Um, you know, stuff can be out in no man's land. It really can. So, you know, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff out there. Even though we're not using it right now, it can just be stored out there. So I really don't want any tool pass again. I want to start fresh. We'll just keep our big square and delete these out of here. Um, so the next one over on the list, we have... Is pro is pocket. So we had profile. We did profile. We did pocket, and we'll go into a couple of these other ones. So let's select a pocket. And what a pocket is going to do is it's actually going to pocket out the inside of a uh, a, a shape for you. So um, you're actually able to take out all the material inside of it. And um, I can't zoom in really any closer, but if you look right here, you'll see D, which is your start depth, which is what we just went over, and then your cut depth is, is uh, all the way down. So your cut depth would be to the bottom. So if I had a .375, that is a .375 pocket out of the thickness of my material. So if I look at the thickness here, this I know this is three-quarter up and down. The way I've got this set at .375 it's going to do a cut depth halfway down. Um, so this was pretty, pretty basic as far as if you pick, select the one that you want. Um, I'm just going to leave it, you know, you want some sort of an end mill. Um, I have a three-eighths one, I got a quarter, I got a half, you know, you got all kinds of them. There's the half inch one, I'll throw that one in there. And again, we come into the whole Climbing conventional, uh, climbing conventional, and and then we also have offset or raster. So if you change on the two of those, you'll see what that is. And this is how the pocket's going to get cleared out. You know what the movement is. Um, a raster would start either in the middle or the outside and kind of work its way, way around. And you know just like um, think about the way to you, you know, mowing your lawn. You know which direction you're going to go across the grass. You know. Um, some people raster where they just work across the front line, do a step over, work across the next line, step over, cross the next line. Um, or offset is you just you know you work, you keep working your way down into the middle, or you're working your way out. Um, this is going to come down to your material thickness. Um, is offset faster than raster? Yeah, um, yeah, it, actually it is. An offset is faster. Like when I when I resurface my table, I always have it as uh, an offset. It's just it's it's faster in the long run than a raster. Um, so we'll leave ours at offset. <clears throat> and again, here I can add a ramp to this one as well. So that's that first move. I can have it ramp down into the depth. So again, if I'm doing you know three eighths deep with a half inch bit and I'm going into MDF I might not need it but you know it's good to get in the habit of adding a ramp it's gonna add time but uh, it, it's it's really good again it's less wear and tear on the tools and the machine and then something we you know overlook a lot is pocket one I mean, what is a pocket one you know I might have six different pockets by the time I'm done that are different depths and sizes so what I really need to do is give it a name that's specific I'm gonna call this one point three seven five this is pocket point three seven five. So I know up in my tool database, I can come back and and uh, I'll know exactly which pocket it is. Oh, that's the one that's three eighths deep. Okay, I gotcha. So we hit calculate, 
I'm going to reset preview since a lot of stuff has been going on. And I'm going to preview visible toolpath. And there's a raster or a off coming out of the center. And it's just working its way all the way out. And that's faster than doing the, the raster. So boom, it just worked its way out all the way out like that. Now remember, since this is an inside pocket, it's going to leave rounded corners like that. That's just how it's going to be with a round bit. But it has successfully done what I asked it to, and it's pocketed 0.375. So to get back into this whole pocket start depth, so say I just did this whole big pocket at 0.375, and now I need to have these two circles pocketed out for this, say, individual part that I'm doing. So I'm gonna. I know this is a pocket point three seven five, and now I need to create a deeper pocket for these two circles. Um, I create a pocket. The cut depth on this one is half inch. These need to be half inch deep. So I set that at a point five. I can use the same bit, but what's going to happen right now if I'm trying to point five these? And I'm going to hit calculate, and I'm going to show you. Oh, no suitable vectors. So let's make sure I select my vectors, and what you're actually going to see here is when this thing goes, it actually starts up here and then has to work itself down. Those, those pockets are only from the 0.375 deep to the 0.5. There's three eighths of material that's already been augged out, so they don't need to be the full depth. So right now, that pocket one has a time of one minute and 42 seconds. For me to actually come in here and say, hey, you don't need to start till." 0.375. Oh, what did I do here? I got a little crazy. Then I would set the pocket depth to what I needed, which was just a one eighth of an inch. So points. I'm starting at 0.375, and I'm going an eighth of an inch deeper. So. Um, Preview all tool paths. So you see that one's starting at the top, going all the way down for the first pocket. And then the second pocket's actually going to start down deeper. Again, I don't use a lot of this. Guys that are uh, making you know certain parts to go quick in high production, you know, these are good tips to have. Boom, that one just starts deep down in there. It doesn't even have to pick up, come out of the way. And that should be a lot quicker on my machine time now. Oh, I didn't change on there, but um, it is a heck of a lot quicker. Guarantee you that. Um, if it was a deep, deep pocket where you needed, so keep in mind different pockets um, and ramps. We got ramps, pocket. All right, perfect. Any any more questions on on pocketing? All right, so drilling is another is another tool path, and I use I'm going to bring up a project that I show you that I what I mostly use drilling for. If you're doing a lot of drilling, drilling, um, you know you're actually going to want to use a drill bit to do the drilling, or even get something like a uh, dr uh, air drill to do your constant drilling up and down. Um, this here's a patio chair that's laid out. And uh, it, it's a chair that all it all is nested in this four foot by four foot area. Well, again, for a guy that doesn't have hold down, what he needs to do is come up with a way to hold the the part to the table. If we check in the tool pass and we run the tool pass, we're going to see that there's tabs. So we know that the uh, actual scrap material is hooked to the um, parts that we're keeping. I can see the tabs in there, but the, these are held together. How am I holding it to the table? What I'm actually doing is I'm making a hold down toolpath, which I'm using the drilling toolpath, 
and I'm having it go down just a little distance right here. You can see where my little ones are. And what those are doing is they're just laying out a hole location where I can safely put a where I can safely put uh, a screw in. If you see on the drawing side of it, you see I've got these little circles, but I've got them far enough away from this part that my router bit, or my cutter would never hit it. So what you can do when you're drawing parts is actually come in and and I'm going to create, you know, I'm using, you can set them to whatever size. I like to just set them to about the screw, the screw head uh, width. And I know I can come down here and put them in each corner. And there's just my little circles there. And when I come over here, I, this is what I use the drilling for a lot. Create a drilling tool path. A drilling is just up and down. So I start depth of zero. I have a cut depth of 0.04. So I'm going to select my four that I want. I only want them to go 0.04. I'm not actually drilling them out. I'm just having them go down a little bit. Select my bit that I was using. And again, drill one. What is a drill one? I have no idea. So I want to call it my hold down so I know what it is in my tool list and hit calculate. So I can go ahead and preview that. And there they are. It's just a little dimple in the wood. Doing a little dimple like that, I'm able to take a four foot by four foot sheet like this, no problem. And the weight of the of the material just sitting on the shop bot, I'm able to come around with my machine uh, with my spindle or router and have that go down and nip that .04 without it moving the material. So then I move, I'll run that and I'll move it out of the way, and then run my four screws in, or you know however many screws. There is an issue going on here that defeats the entire purpose of us using hold down. And I'll give you a sec to look at the screen. What is wrong with my hold down? I mean, it looks exactly right. I'm way out here. I know my, my tool is never going to come over and, and hit it. You know, there's no way my router bit that ends right here is going to come over here. I'm never going to hit it with the machine, but there's still something clearly wrong with this file. And this comes into the the order of your tool paths. Right now, I have this thing doing a pocket .375, a one inch pocket, and then a hold down. So it's doing the hold down last. That defeats the purpose of me even having a hold down. So what I need to make sure is I have these all in the right order. And to move them around, you just highlight them and then use the arrow keys up and down to the position that you want. So I want that hold down first. So this is like this is what the machine's going to read. Is it these whatever order you have these in is how the machine's going to read it. So you don't want to make sure you keep that stuff in order up top. Um, so let's go back into drilling. Um, what I, what we just did for a drill is just is a just a quick trick on how to use drilling tool path for a hold down. And um, I, I like that one. It works good. Now say we actually needed to drill through this material. Uh, we want to drill all these four corners out so we can run screws uh, into, um, you know, we, want, we actually want a quarter inch a screw. So I could set it to be the full depth that I want, 0 0.76. I want it to go, you know, I'll go 0.77. I want it to go a little bit through my material. Um, and then you have this thing in here. Right now what it's going to do, just set up like this and hitting OK, it's just going to go down from 0 to 0.77 in one pass. Well, doing something like uh, aluminum or uh, steel or something, and you try to do that, it's going to break your bit and, and you know knock your shot bot out of whack. That's way too much oomph to go straight down. But what you can do is set a PEC, uh, a PEC drill. So you can um, give it a PEC depth. You, uh, you can have a uh, you can have a uh, Retract gap. You can set all this stuff up to be exactly how you want it. So you could retract up, you know, point one, and then go back down to point two five. So, let's see if I can zoom in on one. Perfect. 
pretty visible tool pass. And there it shows it went through. The 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 thing the the only issue is with these uh three D things is you can't slow them down. It'd be nice if we could slow them down so we could see them like we would on the machine, but um Just some different ways to look at it. See if we could see it a little bit better. But again, it's going to preview so quick. Um, all right. Well, you can mess around with the. <laughs> you want the pictures to look, but. Um, use the single step button. Where are we? All right, Steve. We're. I lose you back here at were you in here so Steve's talking about uh, using a single step button if you want to tell me exactly what your is I'll share it here with everybody else Okay. All right, here. Okay. Below the preview button. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we can do the. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just saying. Um, I would really like to be able to just slow her down and do one. But yeah, that's another thing. Good point. I didn't even cover this one. So, um, what he was showing us too is if you know we ran preview all the tool pad. Oops, I got click click heavy. <laughs> I can actually turn them on and just do the uh, play, pause, step, step fast forward option where I can just you know step by step boom 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 just step it in so um, that's another thing you mess around with in there all right so let's go back into Let's go back into this. Partworks 3D. Sorry, I'm getting a I'm getting a weird humming noise from my backdrop, and I'm gonna mess around here see if I can mute a couple things. It's just coming in so loud right now. It's hard to have the headphones on, and I don't know if I've unmuted somebody on accident. But give me just give me about 30 seconds here. I'm gonna I'll mute this, so I'll be. Right back with this. Hang on. You might hear me making a few noises testing you.
All right, I'm, I hope everybody's hearing me good. My static's gone. I switched headsets. Oh, I think the old one was ready to be replaced. I apologize for that. Um, all right, we did profile pocket drilling. Um, uh, and again, we'll come back to any of this that you want to look into with a little bit more depth. Uh, I would like to spend a little bit of time now with some V-car. V-car is uh, it's a, it's a neat... It's a neat tool path once you get it down, but there's some stuff you got to watch out for on it. So let's just, I'm just going to exit out of Partworks and hit no, I don't want to save. As for me, that is the quickest way for me to actually start a new file. So let's just open up a brand new version of Partworks or Aspire or VCar Pro. Remember, VCar Pro and Partworks are the exact same thing. We just we have the uh, uh, Vectric makes part works exclusively for ShopBot, so it you know exports out to our um, to our software. Okay, we got a question here. This is good. I shouldn't have closed. <laughs> if you want to drill a hole larger than your bit, you have to use a pocket tool bath. Yes, you do. So Steve's question. And I'm just I'm just gonna whatever parameters were last. I'm gonna use again. So say I want to have a, th uh, I want a three eighths hole, right here. That's exactly where I have to have that three eighths hole. I can't create a drilling tool path with a quarter inch bit because that's all it's going to do is make a straight up and down, a straight up and down hole. That hole is going to come and be a quarter inch deep, or I'm sorry, uh, a quarter inch diameter which is not what I want. I need it to be 3 eighths. So what I would actually have to do for that is I would, I, there's a couple things you could do. You could do a pocket um, and, or you could do a profile. It, it depends on the size. It depends on the size of what you're going to do. Uh, for something like that, uh, sticking a quarter inch bit into 3 eighths hole, I would probably just have a profile inside with the spiral ramp um, and let that spiral out and it will spiral out because there's really there's no there's not going to be any material left now if I have say a if I have a part that size I obviously cannot drill unless I have a bit that big around. But what I can do is now I can create a pocket. And let me do the same one times two and you'll see what do I want to use uh what do I want to use for this? Um we'll go double click, control shift, slides over. So this first one, and I'm gonna delete all my previous. This first one here. I want this to be cut out. Now let's just say I go and make a profile all the way through. It's on the inside because I want that to be a hole. And I'm going to give it a ramp. And I'm just going to give it a spiral ramp. All right, check. There's my profile. And when I preview that one, what it's doing is it's leaving me in this extra piece right here, which could you know more than likely come flying out of there. So for something like this, where it's just like a small one-inch you know circle or hole, I'm actually going to go in and create a pocket and tell my pocket to go 0 0.77. And I think I was using a quarter-inch bit on that other one, so um, I will go in and hit cal calculate. Of course, I read that whole pre that whole warning screen, and boom. So what that actually did is it took all the material out of the inside. Um, what is the best tool for this? Yeah, something upcut. You know, um, I use like a um, the upcut that comes with the uh, right here the upcut bit that comes with the. Um, Shopbot starter kit. That's the one I would use for that. You could use an O too. You know, it all depends on the material you're using. But so some, it's it's kind of weird. We just talked about pockets and profiles, 
as two different things, but you know, really we could have a, you know, a, a, we're doing a drilling operation, but we're using either a profile or a pocket, depending on what we need. So sometimes a pocket can be a profile. Sometimes a profile can be a pocket. It, you know, it all depends um, on what you're trying to do. But for me, I, I really don't want this, this little one inch uh, diameter scrap piece because I know exactly what's going to happen because I've done this before. And that's going to, as soon as it makes its circle all the way around and that little piece of wood's in there and it starts vibrating, it's going to shoot up into my uh, dust shroud, crack my dust shroud. And sometimes it'll even snap a bit if you're using hard enough wood. So I would be safe now for the extra 20 seconds of cutting. I can ensure that my bit isn't going to be broken and my dust shroud's not going to be cracked. I would go ahead and just do a big pocket like this and have it all milled out versus leaving that scrap in there. Because I'm concerned about the hole. I'm not concerned about uh, what piece is coming out of there. So, all right. So I wanted to go into V-carving. And to do that, let's just create some text. Uh, draw text. And this is, again, we're just over in the drawing end of it. We'll go down to create vectors and draw text. And... Yeah, Steve says uh, it usually ends up across the room, those little circles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm just going to create some text. And let's, we'll just go October 2012. And... Um, Again, text, you know, we could get into this all in the drawing stuff, but, you know, you can pick your size, where you want it to origin, all that stuff. But all I want to do right now is work about uh, V-carving on this. So, you know, it's just a regular Times New Roman. And you know, shot about training, October 2012. Nothing, nothing fancy. Let's just put a let's just put a V carve tool path to this. You know, I was pretty nervous at first when I first started working. You know, um, about using V carves because you know V carve to me is kind of like 3D because what a V carve is actually doing is it's reading this text and you see how this O is wider than it is down here. It's going to create a deeper pocket or a deeper cut right here than it is here. Um, to to make that V come up at a perfect corner. And so there's a lot of different things going on. But really, w when you use the Create V-Carve Engraving Toolpath, it, it, does, it fi figures everything out for you. Um, so right now, I've got it select. I got my text selected. And let's just not do flat depth right now. Unclick that. We'll come back to a flat depth. Um, just, just start with how... You know, just a regular V carve, uh, a flat depth. If you click on a picture, you'll see that it has a flat bottom to it. We don't want to even do that right now. We'll come back to it. Okay. So in the name V carve is uh, makes it you know pretty obvious what we need for a bit in this. Um, we want to have a, a V bit. So if you've bought a a, a larger buddy or gantry style. Uh, bit kit, you'll get a 60 degree V bit, which is a big half inch shank with like a one inch uh, across, but it does only, it still has 60 degrees on the V. In our desktop version, our V bit that comes and goes out with it is a 90 degree V bit. So it's a smaller bit overall, but it also has a greater angle. It actually has 90 degrees across here. And um, you can get them, you know, 30 degree, here's a 30 degree engraving one, uh, again, the 60, the 90, there's all kinds of different Vs. Uh, we'll just stick with what we have in our, in our bit kits, which is a 60 degree. I'm not going to mess around with any of the dimensions in there right now, just let them be. Um, and, you know, V-carve one, we can leave that. That's my only V-carve I'm doing on this. And I'm going to hit calculate. I'm going to reset and then preview visible tool pass. 
And a V a V uh, carving is actually a fun one to watch. The machine really does. There's we just clicked on that and, it, and oh yeah, that looks great. But <laughs> there's really a lot more going on in there, and you really need to go out and cut a V a V bit text to really understand what's going on. To watch that machine go up and down, because look at the depths on the text. Um, you know that depth to get down in that wider S is deeper than it is over here. It has to come out and go deeper to get that wider. So you got to be careful. You don't run into cutting uh, something that's too too deep for your actual uh, material. You know we can turn it on right here, and I can look in my edge and see that you know I'm clearly not going all the way through. I'm only going that deep. Um, here's another thing that some people do f forget about too is watch my arrow key as I move it around start watching down here in the corner and as I hover over my material if I hover over my material it's actually telling me where my cursor is uh, X Y and Z you can you can move it around and it'll tell you you know I'm touching the 0.75 thickness and then when I go down in that groove it'll actually tell me how deep it goes so you know my B is 0.5 to 0.3 you know as you move it around where's over here 0.3 you know you can see your different depths so um, I guess the Gary asked a question of uh, type size limitation, small for this cut. You know, if you have a big bit like this, you know, you're you're not going to be able to do, you know, little uh, half-inch tall words. You need a smaller engraving or smaller bit. So it really comes down to the uh, size bit you have. But, yes, if you had that little engraving bit, you could do tiny little, tiny little text, and it would still come out just as precise. So turn the toolpath off, and, and if you see, this is what a true V is. A V bit actually V's down in the center of that T. So we're going to come back, and we'll do a flat bottom, and just change one setting, and come back and change it just so you can see what the difference is. Uh, all right, I go back into V carve, and I'm going to give it a flat depth, and then I can tell it how, what depth I want that flat depth to be. So maybe I'll just put it, I don't want this to go any deeper than a quarter of an inch this overall this thing and that's where it's nice to preview this maybe this number is, is this is an arbitrary number I just pulled out of nowhere so I can hit preview and if it looks bad I come back and change it and re-preview it so I'm gonna hit calculate and reset the toolpath or I'll never see the difference and preview all toolpaths whoops <laughs> preview visible I'm sorry let me uh, reset Preview visible tool paths. So now if I go in here, I see that it actually left a groove in there. Well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a flat bottom. Why do I have a groove like that? So you have to go in and do some adjustments with like your step over. Um, I believe I have that too high. Let me make sure this works here. Oh, something I'm doing wrong here. It should give you a nice flat bottom. I don't know if it's just in the pixels in the image. Maybe I get a little bit deeper here. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, you got to reset. Sorry. Uh, golly, I, I'm fudging up now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is 
it's not cleaning it out here. I'm missing a setting someplace. Oh, flat area clearance. And put in like my eighth inch. And now clean that clean that out. So you can really come in and do it a lot of different ways. Um, but you can come in and make your V-carve the wider and narrower and give it a flat bottom like that. Um, for me, a V-carve, I like my V-carves to look like a V. That depth is really great. Um, uh, it's neat. And, and that big bit that comes with the desktop or I'm sorry, with the, the full-size machine, really can get down in there and aug out some stuff. Some things you want to look out for, though, is it, it could go too deep. All right. So um, I'm going to get to Steve's question here in just one second. If I have... Uh, just one thing here. Yeah, you got something like this. Remember, we're only three quarter inch deep. It's going, whoa, man, 0.75 is your deep. That's a 3.0875, 3.087. So that's, it's going to go really deep. So a, a V-carve probably wouldn't be the ideal one to do here. This would be one where you'd want to put a flat bottom on it because if it's going to go that deep, I'll show you what happens here. <laughs> keeps going down and down and what it's eventually going to do is it's going to cut through your table and open up your table and boom there we go now we're cutting into the table we're getting way too deep and it's just going to keep going and going and going so a V carve like I said it take it finds the thickest spot of your project and it has to go as deep down as it can to make that 90 and come up make that angle and come up so it matches all the way around in your whole thing so you know, that really would have been bad news on my on my tool uh, that would probably something probably would give it like a flat depth uh, you know, point six or something like that um, what's a, that's okay can you show us some script font and how to join up letters for example capital letters with lowercase letters uh sure i think i can um script font i'm not sure if that's the name of a font we will go look all right so here is a script bold mt all right uh Edmonds, uh taking off yeah please uh make sure you uh email me any questions and uh, i'll get back to you so thanks for stopping in we'll see you later and um so script font and he steve was saying he would like to see some uppercase and lowercase letters so you know here we'll do my name uh, and it's the beauty of this is we can just bring bring this in and and, and play with it and make you know, get it the way we want it to look. So there's a scripted font, you know, the like cursive, and you know here's capital, and then here's lowercase. Let me get rid of all these tool paths. So I got my my text that I want to now V carve. So I've got it highlighted. I hit create V-carve. And um, 
We'll try it with the 60 degree bit first. Remember, this is the big one that comes with the uh, ShopBot starter starter bit kit with the big the big tools. Um, and I am going to give it calculate reset and then preview visible. So that looks pretty good. That looks really good actually. Um, however. There's one thing I don't like right there. See how that S and that T are so far apart? It looks like it's TJ, Chris, and T Anson. <laughs> so to me, that is an eyesore. And I would want that fixed. I would not want to cut that. Now, what I could do is I could go find a different font. But what if I want that font or my customer wants that font? Now, here's something you can do in editing and drawing. And then, Steve, I'll come back and try your Cheryl script. <laughs> um, what I can do is come over here and go back into part works and I know I don't like that distance between the S and that T. What we have right here in the drawing is um, edit text spacing and curve. So right now I just want to edit the text spacing. So I click on this, the two greens come up and this is where you know you could edit a curve if you wanted to have it curved. Well, right now I want to edit the spacing. So right now, every time I click on the mouse, it brings that in. Or if I brought it in too far, I can hold Shift and click, and it brings it back out. So for me, I want it in so it's touching like that. Now I'm going to go back to Tool Pass and recalculate. And now my T, look at that, the S and the T look perfect now. So that's something that's real helpful is that text spacing. Uh, I will go, let's go try the, uh, can you join the S and the I? The S and the T. Well, you don't need to. You don't need to join them. You need to just do what I just did. Um, there's no sense of joining them. I mean, they're pretty much joined like that. You know, right here like this S and that E, if I want to you know, really be particular, I want to bring them in closer too. I'm just going to go back in there and edit the spacing and then zoom in. And see, these really aren't joined joined. You know, they're just kind of overlapping each other and then they're grouped together. So I just bring that in tight like that and that, they're together. So I think I've answered your question, Steve. Gary, uh, what are you talking about for quick engrave? And I'll go back here and also create. Steve is looking for another text. And yeah, what exactly, or your question about quick engrave work better? Try Sergoi script. Uh, there's a ton of texts on here, um, but uh, you can also import ones too. You can use whatever's you know in your overall Sergoi script. So, here's one we can bring in too. Oh, quick engrave. Okay, so he was saying quick engrave is another one that you could use for a, a font um, over here. So if your computer's got it on there, um, I don't have it on mine. It looks like Elemental P Q. Hmm. Nope, I don't have the. Uh, Steve wants me to do my name in this one. So, oh, that's interesting looking. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I don't like the S on that one. That one's not for me. But kind of neat. Kind of looks like pickup sticks. Um, again, go play with these uh, uh, different um, options in here. Another thing you can do is one more you can do um, in your V-carve. When you're over here creating the text is you might use true type or single line. So what is a single line? It's a different set of texts. So let's just do a single line. Um, I'll leave it that one. Oops. So this one I'd have to do as its own. So it doesn't like that one. It's saying that's open vector. So, um, you know, that one's not going to work as a true type. So, again, this is all a lot of coming in and really playing around and getting the font that you want, um, getting the size text that you want. You can bold, you can italic, you can bring your own in. Um, you can bring your own in from uh, other you know, Microsoft Word type project. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't really played around much with the single, the single line because you don't get, get as much as uh, you don't get as much of a you don't get as much of a selection. So, yeah. Uh, any other, any other questions on the V carve? Um, I guess you also keep in mind too when you're doing any of these, you've got the estimated machine time down here, which is the bottom one and one over. So estimated machining time. Um, that's one that. You know, it's nice. Oh, okay, it's four minutes. That looks right. Or no, no, it's saying six hours. Something's wrong. So, um, okay. What do we have? Any other questions on V carves? <clears throat> All right. Another one I want to get on is fluting. Fluting, we haven't really done. We don't really do a whole lot with uh, a lot of cabinet guys will use it, but as far as um, what uses I practical uses I've used it in yet none. But it's just it's another neat one to know. So um, what we'll do here is we'll just draw a few lines. Um, I'm just going to draw a couple lines and just here's three lines. Some straight lines. Um, how about we'll do a draw an arc? And all I'm doing is copy and pasting these. And I'm also just going to put in a crazy squiggly line here, a freeform. Uh, something like that. So go ahead and get something like that drawn. Um, I just want three straight lines, three curved lines, and then we'll just gotta we'll have a weird, weird squiggly guy going too. Uh, the question is, do you find copy and pasting faster than nesting? Yes and no. Um, and we can do a thing at the end, too, if you want. Nesting, 
<sighs> sometimes, you know, nesting is great. It really is. It can throw in a lot of parts, but sometimes there's just quicker ways to do it than nesting. You know, for for any simple little lines like this, I draw them all day long and copy and paste them faster than I can uh, nest them. And remember, when you double click on something and you bring up the little boxes, I can hold Control Shift and just grab it and keep you know and keep adding those all day long. And you know that's so much faster than even edit and paste. One thing I know that I could not live a day without is Control Z. For you guys that have not memorized Control Z yet, it is Edit Undo. You is you're going to be your best friend. So um, I'm just hitting Control Z to get it back the way I want it. And um, so yeah, so what? Let's go do some fluting. So I switch back over to my tool paths. I'm no longer with the V car. I'm going to delete that out of there. And, um, yeah, copy array is another one that's very handy for me. Um, uh, there's a comment we have here from Justin. So, you know, copy array is great. Uh, copy logics in a linear circular way. Um, oops, where am I going here? Right here. Um, this one's great for multiplying stuff. This one's uh, if it's all the same same thing, and you know if that's something somebody wants to see as a as an actual you know training, if you want to get into some of the deeper things like copying an array or plating or you know how to actually you know edit your V card, this more specific stuff, just shoot me emails or let me know at the end, and I'll write them all down. And again, these all these trainings are just based off your recommendations. So um, again, we're gonna do some floating, and where is our floating? shows you how often I use it. Um, second one over, second one down. Create fluting toolpath. So we can set the depth like we can on all of these, and uh, we'll use you know uh, a quarter, a half inch. That's fine. And select. Um, I'm just going to go with my quarter inch up cut. Um, actually, let's make this one look a little nicer. You could go with like a ball nose, but um, I think this is going to. I'm just going to use my I want it a little bit wider so you can see down in the groove. I'm just going to go 3 8 um, and hit OK. So this one, what exactly is a flute? So a flute is, it's, it's really, the flute is talking about the Z, the distance in the Z, uh, the thickness it's going to go down in. So you can ramp, uh, and I'll set each one of these up different. Here's one that's just uh, ramp over complete length. And I'll hit calculate on that one. Um, and then this one here, I'm just going to I'll come back and go over each one of these. I just want to throw a tool path on each one. Ramp at start. And finally, we'll go ramp at start and... And we can give it a specific ramp length of you know, one inch. So, oops, this middle one I forgot I wanted to add smooth. So, what it's doing here. Is it's actually making like a pocket, like a, for a Craig jig, like a pocket hole. Um, it's starting at zero and it's ramping all the way in, all the way down. This one here's doing the same thing. It's just not deep enough. You can't see the smooth in it. And then this guy here, I told it specifically go in one inch all the way down and back. So there's a couple different you know ways to set up the fluid ing. Um, This one here is just ramp at start end, and we don't even have to have a ramp length on it. We'll have it the full percentage, and watch how this changes. So instead of having that one inch and that one inch, now let's go. Boom. It's just, it's like a half moon, like a biscuit joint, the half of a biscuit you're putting in. Um, so that's what that is showing right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete these, and I'm going to get a thicker, a wider bit so you can see better down in the holes. Um, 
you know, fluting can be done on the curves as well. Let me select these. Um, there really isn't much to a flute. We'll go select a half inch straight. Preview visible tool pass. So, oh, I didn't select. So it's starting and it's going to a depth all the way down. What I really wanted to do was I wanted a ramp at start and end. You know, you might want it like that. It's, you know, again, it all comes down to um, preference you're looking for. So, bang, there it is. You know. It's just showing you what you can do. So this is a decorative thing. You know, you do it with a ball nose or a V-bit, you know, and get different looks. Uh, you know, V-bit kind of looks funky, but a ball nose looks really good doing it like this. Um, so that's really all that fluting is. Bruce asked a question if I had a time to do the uh, inlay feature, and um, we do have time, but Bruce, I, really, I've got a, a whole demo going together right now for the inlay, and I'm actually, you know, something I've been working on ahead of time, and I think that give you guys a lot more, uh, um, a lot more depth and what I could do in the you know the last 15 minutes actually got a full uh, um, I got a full uh, training coming up just for that one and but let me just show real quick what he's talking about inlays so an inlay tool path is where you select the type of inlay you would like to create whether it's a straight a stepped are you doing the, the pocket or the hole and, and then it comes in and it'll actually figure it all out for you so um, Again, that's something we can really get in and mess around with, but uh, um, I, something it needs a little bit more than 10, 10 minutes. But um, um, I definitely got one coming up for inlay to a pass, and um, it's very useful, and very nice, and very precise. So um, let's see. I'm trying to think of any other ones that I wanted to. Make sure we got over with you today. Oh, I'm sorry. The the texturing toolpath is one as well. Oh, I'm sorry. This one too. We could have done a um, a ramp on. So ramp over complete length of this crazy this crazy mess here. <laughs> So it really starts out as nothing, and it's constantly getting deeper, deeper and deeper, deeper. That's nice for you know people that are doing uh, like different, like marble things and little troughs and stuff with water. That's a really helpful one. Um, so that was that's inlays. Um, sorry, that's fluting. So um, so far we've done profile, we've done pocket, we've done drilling, we've done V carve, and now we've done fluting. So. Those are the main five that I wanted to cover. I got through them a little bit quicker um, than normally do. I usually have a lot of questions on stuff. I don't know if I've just stuttered on too long. People have fell asleep. But I'm seeing 20, 20 people still here, so I'm guessing must be doing okay here to keep people's attention. Um, but remember, like, just because it says a profile toolpath, you know, it doesn't mean it has to be a profile. You know, it can be one. It can be one that is, you know, just to a certain depth. Any of these we can change. I mean, we can make them however we want. And a uh, sign of a, the sign of a good teacher. Yeah, putting them to sleep. <laughs> uh, um, let me bring up some other projects here. You guys will see. We can use stuff in other realms. All right. All right. So this is a washer toss game. You know, here's an example where, you know, this is right here as a, a handle that needs to get pocketed out. So if I go and uh, 
V curve. So there's my pocket, cut out all circles. So I go in here and look at this. This is a profile. And what I've actually done here is, you know, profile these small parts with and give them a tab so then they so then they stay in in place. Um, what I, what I could have done was I could have come in here and pocketed those all the way out to the full depth if I didn't want that little piece in there. Um, I'll show you an example of that. Um, open another one here. Well, we didn't do it on that one. I'm sorry. Well, here's an elephant belly coin blank or actually go in and cut that big circle out so when I do that one um, you know that's a circle it's really not a drill but what it is it's a you know I came in and I profiled it out and I did it to the inside of the circle versus to the outside of the circle so you know it really all depends on the profile that you need um, for me I needed that profiled out on the inside so I set it to the inside so sometimes you have it on the outside obviously for when I do my um, overall profile all which is the outside of the elephant he's profiled to the outside I see a t-bone fillet on some pieces um, yeah was that on the last project or on this one Steve I want to make sure I didn't get too far ahead uh, but I, I do I use the t-bones and the uh, I use the T-bones and the dog bones all the time. So for this one to actually fit together, you see I've got my square corner down here. I've actually put in a T-bone, or this is a dog bone, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have real formal, uh, you know, joinery names around here, T-bone, dog bone. But, hey, you know what it is. Um, right here, you know, you got to put these in. Otherwise, you just have a, you'd have a square corner right there, and your bit wouldn't be able to get in there. So, you know, with that square corner like this, um, you know, I come in through with a quarter inch bit, you know, and I just have that quarter inch bit and I leave it right at the corner, you're going to have all this material right here and you won't be able to take this thing and slip it down in that hole. But what we can do is add this dog bone and T-bones and take that bit now that's coming around and have it go in here notch this out and have it come back out and then have it keep traveling along its tool path so um, use a lot of dog bones and t-bones on projects and if that's something too people are finding that they're having um, troubles with or want to know more about the dog bones and t-bones that's definitely something we can do um, I use that for all the joinery on this chair um, that's how that one goes together this is all mortise and tenons these are all tenons sticking up and they go into these mortises. Um, now there's there's that chair right there. So you don't even see in the finished product. You know, you don't see any of those mortise and tenons at all. And you don't see that any of the dog bones at all because they're all on the back side. Um, but what you do see, if you look real close, there's one spot where they're showing. And that's right there. It would have been nicer if I would have actually done a T-bone up and down versus that dog bone like that. And let me bring up the part, which is this part right here. So... See how I've got the the dog bones sticking out? If I would have re if I would have drawn these like this,
If I would have drawn them like this, so the T-bone came up and down, you would never see that hole right there. So when you get into design purposes or design, you know, that's that's all into the designer. So, um, you know, that's that's one to uh, think about right there. Um, all right, what do we have? Any what do we got for questions so far? Anybody want anything gone over again, re redone, brought back up? Um, we can go back in right now and bring up specific projects that you want and, and draw in them, or we can um, move on if we have a few a few more minutes. We can mess around with something else. Um, really, just want to know what we're at where we're at for questions, and I'll unmute some people if they want to talk, and um, let's see. To see what we have going for any questions right now. So, anybody out there? <laughs> oh yeah. How you doing? I'm doing fine. That's a very good presentation. Okay, uh, that was seems a little quite as smooth as I thought. I thought I had everything figured out here. Um, head, after the headphone uh, screw up, it kind of got me flustered. <laughs> so, right. Uh, I had a question here. I said, uh, "Are these going to be bi-weekly?" And yes, they will come. 2013. Most of them will be. Most months will be. That won't be starting until in January. Right now, they're just one a month, and again, those are all listed on our, our website. I'm going to actually uh, mute the uh, um, mics again. There's so much back back noise. So if you got questions, uh, please just uh, type them into me through the chat window. But again, yeah, our. Uh, All of our stuff is going to be online. Uh, we've got a basic training this Friday and Saturday, or next Friday and Saturday here in Durham, and that will all be recorded as well. So you you can you can log on and, and watch during basic training. Maybe you've never seen the, you know, maybe you've never come to basic training and you want to watch, you know, what we do in basic training. You can actually uh, sign on and watch. There there really isn't much interaction with the online people um, during online training. I mean, or during the basic. I mean, we cater our trainings to our basic trainings to the people who are here. These are people that have paid the the three hundred dollars to come down and take the two day training with us. Uh, we get up a lot and go use the different machines. We're constantly cutting stuff out, so we're going in the back room into the different machines. So um, if you do come in to uh, um, log in next Friday, Saturday, you know, you'll know you definitely find a lot of resourceful information, but you won't be getting the one-on-one -on -one attention that you do in online training. It's because, I'm, again, I'm direct all my attention to the guys that are guys and girls that are there. All right, I got some chat questions here. Let me let me zoom in and see what they are. Um, but yeah, if you can, definitely check that one out this next Friday. Okay, got a f got a font question. Once you make a Let's see, let me get Steve's. Select single line and select connecting script one line. All right. I'll come back to your question in a sec, Gary. Let me go with Steve. All right, the question is, um, he's, we're back in some text again, and he wants to go into text and go into single line and he wants a font of connecting script line connecting script one line and we'll just do that's what we were doing earlier there we go that's what I was looking for there So what this will allow us to do is 
this now I can just take and run my um, V carve over. Oh, it won't. It's an open vector. So, what you'll actually have to do with this one is, since it's an open vector, you'll actually have to go and do a profile and on the line. And this one, you you know, set it to whatever depth that you you want it to be. Since it's single line, it's not going to um, get bigger and smaller like a, a V carve. So that's where that would be like that. But well, why does it look funky? I'm guessing someone didn't change the bit to a V-carve. <laughs> so, and hit calculate. And there, that's how you do a true line. So I think that was what you were asking, Steve. Oh, uh, type Steve. How do you connect? How do you connect the S? Connect the C and the H. Okay. So I said, let's type in Steve. Yeah, that's an interesting one there. So this one here, I'm already guessing that's going to be too far out. So I'm going to do my edit text spacing and curve, bring it in. Like that. This one I'm probably even gonna go a smaller bit. I try like the engraving thirty. Something like that. That's just the way that true font is, it doesn't let you actually have them exactly touching each other. <laughs> that's just, that's how that font is. There's nothing we can do about that besides choose another font. So, all right, Justin, thank you. I'm glad you got something out of this today, and, you know, we'll see you later. Um, I think I missed somebody's question. If I miss a question way up here, I'm sorry, I got so many different questions popping in, both, you know, publicly and privately, that I'm really sorry uh, um, if uh, I miss your question. Justin, again, I'm glad you got the PRS Alpha. That's my baby. That's my tool, too. I love my tool. So um, um, let's see. Gary Mandel, I know I missed a question from you. So much oh, right there. Once you make a part in 3.5 or 3.5D, can you go back and edit the files once saved? When you're saying 3.5, are you meaning like the, the part works file? Um, can you go back and and edit it, uh, Gary. I think I'm answering your question. Uh, once you make a part in 3.5 or 3.5D, can you go back and edit the files once they're saved? Yeah, um, you can go back and edit the files anytime. Any anytime. Yeah. Um, so, are you talking about overall, like a file or the tool path? I guess I'm. Uh, a little looking for exactly what you're saying. I'm sorry. I'm, it's probably just me. <laughs> Not quite getting it here. Okay, I can come back into Partworks and open an old file, change it, whatever I want, and, and hit Resave. Or I can just come in here and edit it however I want right now. I can turn all these off. Say, oh man, uh, um, you know, I, I really should have. What are these ones? Cut out circles. So I'll cut out all circles at 1.51, or I want to change a bit. 
uh, you know, I can come in here and grab all those and modify them. I'm pretty sure that's what you're asking. You know, like say, oh, I really wanted to go, you know, deeper, or I wanted it in one pass. You know, I can change that kind of stuff. And, you know, then I could hit, you know, calculate and save. Um, is that what you were asking? I, I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> completely flubbing up what your question is. Um, did I get you answered, Gary? Uh, I, I hope so. His question was, you create a part in 3.5, can you come back and modify it? Uh, yeah. Um, um, you know, we, we could do, after I cut a file and go back to edit it, it would not get, especially in 3.5D. And when you say 3.5D, are you talking about PartWorks 3D? Because um, I know you can't do it in there. Um, I mean, you can go back and and re remake a new file, but you're not going to just you know edit it. Um, you know, I can go in here and load, you know, load my file and save it, and then come back into it and say, oh no, I really wanted that to be. Um, you know, this distance instead. So I guess Gary's question is, you know, I, I create my, I create my file in here. Hang on. Uh, Horsehead. Here's my file that I created earlier. And so I, I open it back up and, you know, I can now change it, say I wanted to change it to inches, 12 inches by 12, and I really want it 13 inches. So all I have to do is hit apply, and then go through all the steps again. So for 3D, that's how it's going to be um, in PartWorks 3D. You're going to have to go in and redo the steps, and then just you know work your way through the steps once more. Um, and then you know resave it and bring it back into PartWorks. Okay, great, good, glad I answered your question. You know, anybody too generates any questions out of this that I'm not answering in the group format or you don't want to ask in the group format, just call, you know, after after the training, call ShopBot and just ask for TJ and um, be more than happy to do what I can to get you up and going. So um, anybody else got any specific things they want to see? Uh, you know, definitely have the... Next, you know, half hour blocked out at work here to uh, answer anybody's questions they have. I can go back in and reshow something if they would like. Um, you know, you start drawing. What does slicing do? Slicing uh, in 3D, that's a way to think of like a loaf of bread. You get this rectangle as your loaf. And then you, somebody comes in and slices it, and then you can take each slice and then lay each slice down in 2D, and um, and then cut it out 2D and then glue it back together. Uh, I'll show you one specific example of slicing. Right here, this bull. Um, oh, what am I doing? He's on the website for you to download. Um, yeah, go ahead, Gary. If you got a 3D question, I'll see if I can answer. It's fine. Um, as far as the slicing, that is I did this one. This is actually with a one, two, three D catch. Or one two three D make it's uh, one that uh, um, Autodesk has out for free right now. If you go to Autodesk one two three D make, you can download this. It's it's a great great piece of software. So this is actually a bull. It took a full four foot by eight foot sheet to make this bull, um, and he's a big bull. Actually, he's about 
two feet long, over a foot tall, and all I did was I went in there and took them and he sliced it into each individual slices. And here's all the slices. You see them laying on the table. And then I take all those slices, clean them up, follow the instructions on where which slice goes where, because it, it labels all the slices as it cuts. You can use a little V-bit and uh, label them. And then glue this guy back up in whatever, you know, order it asked for. And then, so that's what... That's where I find slicing to be very useful. And again, if you get on the website, you can download this tutorial, and it takes you to the um, it takes you to the page, this Autodesk page, where you can get this stuff. And this stuff's great. Again, it's all out there for free right now, and it's so easy to bring import back into Partworks and Toolpath. So I'm big, big, big fan. Um, Gary said he had another 3D question, so. You can go ahead with that, but a couple other people were wanting to play around some more in the part works. So now you get into like more complicated stuff for tool bathing and um this is just like a mock up of maybe a part somebody wants you to prototype out of MDF and what they're looking for is you know a a, a pocket here a different depth pocket they want this square pocketed out and this this is a cutout so um there's a lot of different ways to come in at this um what you can do is draw, you know, pot, tool path them however you want, and then reorder them. So right now I know that, um, like this one here, I need to have pocketed uh, uh, 0.5 of an inch. So I am going to change that to 0.5. And again, you know, I want it to offset a raster climb. Uh, you know, it all depends on what you're doing. And I'm going to, you know, like I said, it's, it's good to start getting in and naming them. So that's a pocket of 0.5. Uh, this one had a pocket of a quarter inch. So you just come back in. It's going to save all your settings from last time. The only thing you got to change is, is, your, is your depth. Everything else stays the same. So uh, I'm just going in and changing them. And this one had a pocket of oh see what's po what's, what is pocket one you know I got ahead of myself well it should be pocket you know point two five so I know which one it is that way when I'm calling out on my drawing and my 3D files I can say all right which one of these were oh, pocket okay it's that little circle up top boom so um, um, this one here we got pocketed and boom it lights up. Pocket. Which one was 0.25? The two circles. I don't remember. Well, when I click, it lights that one up. Ah, okay. Check. Um, I want to give it another pocket. I had a pocket of uh, this one was seven eighths. Now here's another trick you can do. So seven eighths would be equals. Or what you could do if you don't know the decimal of seven eighths is you could go seven divided by eight equals, and boom, it's going to pop out that number. Um, so, um, you know, that's a way to do things too. And, oh, Gary's asking us questions here. Um, well, we'll come back to yours, Gary, in a sec. I'm in the middle of this one now, so. Um, and my, give it my pocket name, 0.875. And hit calculate. Oop, I didn't want that. <laughs> That's way too deep. Um, I meant seven sixteenths, not seven eight. So again, what's seven sixteenths equals 0.04. And I'm just going to come down here and write right pocket seven sixteenths. Hit calculate. But I grabbed the wrong one. Sorry, I was looking at. The post over there, which is fine. So I've got the wrong one selected. 
Now I just hit the one that I want and I hit calculate. Bang. Uh, profile here. Um, I want to go profile pass. You give it a profile depth. Uh, I'm 0.75, so I'm going to go you know 0.77, a little bit deeper. I want it to the outside of the line. Make sure I got the right bit. Um, I want to add some tabs. Again, you can you know have them manually add them for you. Or you can say, you know, nope, I want my tabs here and here, here and here. Um, you know, profile outer dimension. Give that a calculate. That's okay. Um, I think I've pretty much got everything grabbed but this last one. That one I wanted to give a profile on the inside. And I also want to add a tab to that. Otherwise that circle is going to come out of there. So I just put two tabs in there and let them add it himself. And again, I'll hit calculate. And now I've got all these up here. I got five of them now, but here's again, you know, I don't want to pocket the outside and then come back in and do this. What's a profile one? You know, I forgot to name it again. So get in the habit of giving these a name. A profile, inner circle. So um, hit calculate with that and hit OK. So this one I know I don't, I want this one last. So I can just grab that and move that over. So, um, Go ahead and hit preview all your tool paths. Boom, boom, boom. Shows you what's going on. Well, something didn't register there. I'm supposed to have a square. So where did that go wrong? So you come back and look. I turn on pocket point five. And I look. I have a cut depth of zero. So I need to make sure that says 0.5. So what I'm really trying to show you with all this mismatch is um, you got to hit that preview. You got to hit. You got to preview it because if you would have went out to the machine and back and forth between your machines, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Where right now you can preview all these tool paths right here in place. And boom, you can check and make sure it all looks right. Because now, yes, it's looking what I wanted. You know, that would have been three trips out to the machine and back that I wasn't quite sure, you know, what what's going on. But right here in my preview, I can I can see what's going on. Exactly. Yes, I'm tabbed. It's not falling out. Um, you know, pocket point five. That's that one. Pocket two five. Yes. Pocket seven sixteenths. Yep. Um, inner circle. Outer dimension, bang! So I'm looking at them all right there. Okay, if you see the material thickness with the cut, does this not diminish? Yeah, actually it does. He's got a good point here. So I've got a I got tabs right here holding my parts together, and um, what these are is 0.4 and 0.22 thickness. So 0.22 thickness is actually not going to be there because I'm cutting 0.77. My material is only 0.75. I'm going 0.02 into the table. So my tab will actually end up being 0.02 less. It'll actually be a 0.2 tab. But still, a 0.2 is just right. So that's the sweet spot um, for like a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. It really is. But he makes a valid point. Anything deeper here than your material thickness as what you're going to lose down here in a tab. So uh, uh, I think I answered your question, Steve. Is there any other questions with this drawing or this 3D, this before I go into the 3D stuff for Gary? Um, All right, so what's Gary got here? Okay.
What is relationship of machining margins to depth of model cut plane in model? So that would be 3D. Part works 3D. Machining margins, he's asking to depth of model and cut plane. So, you know, really what this is here is your actual uh, model size. Is the actual size of the model. Um, when you come over here to step number two, this is the material size and margin. So you could actually set this to be, you know, whatever size material. Um, for us, you know, 90% of the time we're bringing them in to a different, we're bringing them into uh, uh, ShopBot's regular part works so we can um, add them to a different project. So which is X Y position is saying is where do you want it to import in into the into the um, part works? So this is here. I put this at zero zero, and um, that's where I would have the uh, X Y position. I think that's what you're saying. The other one is a cut plane, and I believe that's. I'm trying to see what you're asking here. Um, I always do it from the top is where I bring it in, from the top. You don't want to model it from anywhere else for, for stuff like this unless you're getting into full 3D, you know, like a full, you know, like a bringing in a full, fully 3D thing that you're going to cut four, uh, four axes with. Get will not cut to a zero or not right. Error tool pass step down does not exceed cut. I'm not Gary. This might be a better thing we mess around with on the phone one on one because I know you know I hit OK there. You know I, I put my position to um, you know zero zero. That's where I want to bring it in. Um, apply. Yeah, I just I'm not seeing the error message that you talk about and I might not be reading what you're asking but let me hit calculate oh, it doesn't like me at all maybe this is what you're <laughs> Oh, that's huge. 12 inches thick. I want that one inch. On the top. Next. Uh, zero, zero. Apply. Next. I don't need a roughing. <laughs> Am I getting anything what you're looking for here, Gary? I, I feel bad. I'm not quite understand your stuff today. Uh, 29 minutes is what it's saying. I hit next. Uh, cut out. I'm not doing that. Just boom. There's my 3D horse head. So. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's what you were looking for. All right, anybody else get questions? Ask them now or I'm going to start wrapping this up here. Um, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. If I've missed any questions, you know, uh, email me or call in or, uh, you know, we don't do a whole a lot of tech support for, um, you know, drawings. You know, drawing, there's the Vectric forum, the uh, Vectric tutorials, our forum, our tutorials, and then my training. So, um, but you know we don't have somebody constantly do a uh, full time that's sitting there teaching you how to draw. So you know now is a good time to ask questions, um, or if it's something you really just got a hiccup on, you know do feel free to call in for that. No problem there. Um, but 
Um, anybody else here? Any other questions? And again, these are recorded, so if you need to come back and watch them later on, I would really appreciate if anybody could send me some more emails with some feedback um, on things I could do better for the future. Uh, this one, I usually get a lot of good good feedback uh, before people leave. I've had a couple people leave that are pretty happy, but this maybe this group is just a quiet group so um, usually people are saying all right learned a lot got a lot out of this so if there's something there's my email uh, you can send me any ideas for improvements for the future I'd be more than happy to uh, take those into account and, and, and make this better for you because I want you know this is that's what we're here for is to make the make the training your way so uh, um, yeah I guess if there's any other questions let me know otherwise there's my email and um, you know, send me any suggestions that you have. Uh, send me anything you'd like to see on in the future. I'm definitely going to be doing one on inlays coming up. And I don't know if that's next month or the, uh, December, but it's it's definitely coming up here real soon. Is the inlay one? And uh, um, again, they'll be recorded, so you can come back and watch them again. Um, I hope everybody got out of it what they wanted. Uh, thanks, thanks for choosing Shopbot. Uh, it's it's great. Love it. I'm so happy I can be a help. And hopefully uh, um, you guys are good. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.